The title for my speech is, The Church Needs to Occupy. Is the church really evicting Occupy? Is the church really throwing out a body that is speaking for the poor? These are the questions I was left with after I heard about St. Paul's Cathedral in London, England, closing its doors to the Occupy London movement, the first time the cathedral has closed its doors since World War II. It then proceeded with a legal action to remove the tents from the church's grounds. Has the church ceased to be a voice for peace and justice in contemporary Western society? Chris Hedges, a New York Times columnist, was right when he posed this challenging statement to the church. The Occupy movement is the force that will revitalize tradi traditional Christianity or signal its moral, social, and political irrelevance. The Christian church must partner with Occupy and regain its ability to speak for justice and peace within mainstream Western society. This past October, I had the ability to go down to New York and visit the Occupy Wall Street movement. It was not the purpose for the chair, but it, was, but it left me with the biggest impression. I could not help but be, be moved by the few hours I spent in Zuccotti Park. They had a kitchen so that everyone could eat. They had a medical tent so that sick could be taken care of. A couple of young adult women were even fundraising for a coffee maker so the park could have a coffee lounge. It was a community that looked out for one another, no matter who you were, no matter where you came from. It was a fellowship that happened in that park, which was missed by the media, and that I found profoundly life-giving and spiritual. This community also had meetings, debates, and organized protests, but they did this in a way to make sure everyone was heard. The people in the park were imagining a society where the elites no longer were in control and everyone had enough. The park, to me, was a prophetic voice, stationed in the middle of the financial district of the most powerful empire in the world. The outcasts of society were united for change against the oppressive oligarchy that had taken over their country. It was a place that the Jesus from the Gospels I know about and I have read about would have certainly been a part of. It is a community of the downtrodden and the outcasts imagining a society that seeks justice for the poor and that heals the sick and declares freedom to the oppressed. The Occupy movement is certainly a movement speaking for economic peace and justice in the mainstream Western capitalist culture. It is speaking against a system that allows the wealthiest 400 Americans to make more money than the bottom 50% of Americans. It speaks against a system that lets the United States a country with a GDP of $14 trillion have a poverty level of 15% and a child poverty level of 22%, according to the National Center for Children in Poverty. The Occupy Movement is speaking against a system that allows, on average, a, a student in every single classroom in the United States to have their house foreclosed or in danger of having this happen. This wage inequality within Western society should cause the church to rumble with righteous anger. Allowing the systemic violence to happen without addressing it is a sin by the church. By not supporting the Occupy movement, the church is ignoring the economic justice central to its biblical text. The author of Leviticus chapter 25, verse 35 to 37, paints a picture of a new kingdom in their chapter about the principle of Jubilee. It reads, if one of your countrymen becomes poor and is unable to support himself among you, help him as you would an alien or a temporary resident so he can contribute, uh, continue to live among you. Do not take interest of any kind from him, but fear your God so that your countrymen may continue to live among you. You may not lend him money at interest or sell him food for profit. The demands of Occupy are non-radical. What this passage demands is truly radical. The author, author of Leviticus clearly paints, um, sorry, clearly calls to the people of God to live differently from the mainstream world, to form a kingdom that speaks to radical equality. 
The author here is calling the church to live the kingdom of God. The church I would particularly speak about is the Mennonite church, as it is my own faith tradition. The Mennonite church needs to learn from the prophetic voice of the Occupy movement. For too long, the Mennonite church has misunderstood a pacifist theology as non-confrontational. It has allowed us to ignore the systemic violence that's being done in our countries, in our communities, and even within our own church. We must learn from the Occupy movement um, to how to confront the powers with civil disobedience and social unrest, to create a positive economic change within our own society. In Matthew chapter 21, verse 12, Jesus enters the temple and turns over the tables of the money changers and the benches of the dove sellers. Occupy has captured this righteous anger and has, chained and has had the courage to confront the banks and corporations in our own society, calling them out on their injustices that is tearing the very fabric of our civil society. We as a church should thank the Occupy movement who have begun this journey to a new reality, a more peaceful reality. The Mennonite church must respond to the prophetic voice of this movement. If we do not, we will single signal our churches, moral decay, and irrelevance within mainstream society. My hope is that the Occupy movement will wake up the church to this economic injustices around us, because I believe the voice of the church is, is important within the Occupy movement. There are parts of the church that do live radically different economic communities that can help provide visions for a better future and future systems. First, there's the historical church. There's the church in Acts, where they shared everything and made sure no one went hungry. In the Mennonite tradition, we have the Regal Place Fellowship in Chicago, where they share life and all their possessions together in community. In the emerging church, there's Shea Claiborne, in the simple way, that strives to live without excess of things. These communities are important because they provide examples of economic systems based around equality and collective decision-making. The church can provide proof of a world outside the Western capitalist typology that box in our society's imagination for a better future. The church as a physical building should also be offered up to the Occupy movements around the world. Occupiers are clearly articulating the gospel message, um, and they are being persecuted for it. The church should be an open sanctuary to where these individuals can find rest. As the workers of justice become tired, let them find strength within the church as a physical building. The church should offer up their facilities as an asset to the Occupy movement. Finally, I believe the church needs to be present to articulate the message of nonviolence in the, in the movement, as it can be seen in Oakland and New York and many other camps um, in the Occupy movement. The movement has the ability to turn violent. It should be the church's role and voice that speaks for dignity to all and peace everywhere, both to the protesters and to the police. The church should be present to speak to the principle of justice that is not sought through violence but through the love of your enemy. The church has a role in Occupy, and I believe we need to fill it. It is time for the church to unite with, uh, with activists in mutual respect. The church has a role in Occupy, and I believe we need to fill it. As, sorry, as Jim Wallace said, this could be the beginning of a powerful relationship between the faith community and the leaders of the emerging generation that is so clearly and passionately committed to creating a better world. God calls us to create the kingdom of heaven on earth where economic justice is present. We, as a church, must be inspired by the prophetic voice of the Occupy movement, for it is the voice of God proclaiming justice for the poor and freedom for the captives. The church has ignored systemic, the systemic economic violence in our own communities for too long. It is time to unite hand in hand with our activist neighbors for justice and peace within our own society. Thank you.